You may be seated for a brief moment. I stand before you now a little tired, but strengthened, a little weary, but reinvigorated. To our officers and board, to the William Davidson Foundation, to my colleagues and our staff, to each of you, thank you for the opportunity to spend the last three weeks in Israel continuing my fellowship with the Shalom Hartman Institute. I'm honored to participate in Hartman's Rabbinic Leadership Initiative, which brings together Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, and Reconstructionist rabbis for the intensive study of Jewish texts and to confront together the great questions affecting the Jewish people today. Given the changing attitudes toward the Jewish state among North American Jews, the theme for this summer was Why Israel? We explore diverse answers to the question of why and how diaspora Jews should be in relationship with Israel in the 21st century. We discuss Israel's political future, including the role of religion, minority rights, parliamentary democracy, and the complexities of life in our world today. We also learned about Israel's role on the world stage and how it addresses war and natural disasters around the globe. And all that was just in the classroom. For me personally, other highlights included being in Israel with Rebecca and without children for the first time in 17 years. It included wonderful meals with Rebecca's sister Barbara and her husband Jonathan, along with their sons who made Aliyah and their grandchildren who were being raised in the Jewish state. It included getting to spend amazing time with the parents of Itai Schwartz, the Israeli Shinshin living with us, we now know quite well from where Itai gets his charisma, warmth, wisdom, and loving nature. And in that Itai's father is the president and highest judge on Israel's labor courts, they gave us a private tour of the Israeli Supreme Court building. This trip included the opportunity for me to officiate at the bar mitzvah celebration of Brady Gold, son of our members Karen and Seth Gold, as Brady chanted Torah at the Kotel at the Western Wall. It was a morning of tremendous joy there at Judaism's holiest site. This trip included for me completion of the Jerusalem nighttime 10K race, which took me from the Israel Museum up and through the old city and back to Gan Saker. And I must tell you, the entire race was either uphill or downhill. There were no flat roads whatsoever. And I have a medal to prove I finished. Lastly, this trip included a day-long visit to Hebron, to Hebron, my first time at the burial site of Machpelah for Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Leah, and even Adam and Eve. There I stood in the likely spot where, as Genesis tells us, Abraham purchased the first piece of real estate in the Promised Land. Hebron is also an example of the moral and military challenges inherent in the process of an ancient people reclaiming their land, a land that had been settled by someone else. The Israeli writer Amos Oz commented, quote, the land of Israel is not a museum of God. No place is a museum of God. No person and no inanimate object is a thing of worship. It is permissible to both touch and change the things on the condition that you yourself are prepared to be touched and changed. You come to a place, a hill, the desert, a spring, a house. You change it, and you make your mark upon it. But it is also important to be open and give it the opportunity to leave its mark on you." End quote. Each time I'm in Israel, the Jewish state and her residents leave a mark on me. I pray that in the coming months, I will be able to share with you what I've gained and that together we can shape Israel through our support and our love and even more importantly, we can let Israel continue to shape us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I invite you now to please rise. 